Fast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, Kevin Barry here. Thanks very much for coming along to this webinar today in relation to QuickBooks Online Accountant. Um, I'm going to run to the new features. A lot of you here have already been on this program, I'm sure. So it's not about what it does, it's about what, it's what about it will do, okay? So let's go see what I can do for you now. And um, I'm going to get some basic items out of the way first. The main thing is housekeeping, okay? So we've only got an hour. Um, 45 minutes, I'll run through the main features. You can type any questions in during the presentation. And when that is happening, you see now, I just get um, some of my thing here sorted out. And uh, sorry, while the presentation is happening, type in any questions you like. We have a great team available to answer them, okay? Um, I really need to emphasize a really important point. Like this is for QuickBooks online accountants, okay? And this webinar here for accountants and bookkeepers, the great thing about this is you get QuickBooks free at the top and you're able to look into each of your clients beneath that. They're all right beneath that, like a, it's like your God looking down on all the clients. It's really cool. Um, so it's a bird's eye view of everything you can do for your clients. And if you work for an accountant who's the QuickBooks Online accountant, your team can be brought in as well, okay? So the features I'm gonna show you, some of them are just in and some of them aren't in yet, but they're about to land. And the great experience we're having at the moment with Intuit and QuickBooks is that they're very focused on Ireland. So things that are happening here and are peculiar or unique to this country, they're incorporating them into the QuickBooks, okay? So uh, just about myself, the, I've been using QuickBooks for over 20 years. Uh, it's moved from desktop to online. I'm a platinum advisor. I've got that certification and I'll talk about what that means for you later on in this, okay? Um, because there's nothing stopping anyone on this webinar getting that today, okay? So, so what's exciting about these features, and I have a list there of what we're gonna run through, is that they're geared towards accountants and QuickBooks advisors. So that's the people at the top looking in and how they can improve the way we work with clients and run our practices. It's all about giving accountants the tools to empower their clients as well. So what I mean by that is that the more the client knows, the more they can do for themselves and you can help them and tweak it and give them the information they want in order to run their businesses profitably. Okay, and that's the hardest thing. So uh, it's our number one responsibility as accounting professionals to make sure our clients understand when they're making money, how they make money, and where they can improve, you know? So we take it pretty seriously. So let's see how these features can help. Okay. Now, okay, I'm gonna demonstrate those items we just had to look at. So the items, I'll, I'll just jump back, sorry, to the features. I didn't really explain them fully there, did I? Um, the Performance Center, okay, it's there. And it does a lot more than those two words indicate, okay? I'm gonna show you about auto reminders in relation to invoicing and sales for your own clients and for clients of your customers. Month end review is just in about three weeks, okay? It's a great little checklist feature and we'll see what that does. The latest invoice features haven't fully landed yet in QuickBooks Ireland, but I'm still able to show you here today what they do. Irish VAT on QuickBooks. Now this has been a heartbreaker. It's over the heartbreak and I'll illustrate where you need to look to make yourself comfortable about that, all right? But this is a fantastic feature and not a new feature then as timesheets. The amount of people who don't use timesheets are, and I'm talking about accountants and bookkeepers. And I saw a lot of chat on a, a chat room I'm on recently about what's a good timesheet program and it's in this program, but not enough people use it, so. Let's sort that out. So I'm going to demonstrate the actual program here. Um, so I'll show you with the performance center, first of all. So I'll actually go away into QuickBooks this moment now. Let's get it up there. Okay, so here's ourselves, okay? 
And when you're the umbrella, the QuickBooks online accountant, when you sign into QuickBooks, it gives you that, that request. Are you the online accountant or the QuickBooks online? You guys on this should be the online accountants or else you're part of the team of an online accountant. Okay. So it lists down all, I've had, I have a selection of our clients here, down here that I've changed the names for confidentiality reasons, but they're all down there. So that's the first thing. That's how easy it is to access it down, right? The second thing is that all on this one here under clients, you go over here as well. Okay. And the performance center for yourself is under the word overview and business performance. All right. So let's just talk about you for a second. QuickBooks Online Accountant. Come and see the future of business. And straight away, it brings you up what we all like seeing. There's a way for it to answer. is pictures. A picture tells a thousand words. All right. Um, so there's revenue by time. Gross profit over time. Expenses over time. Eight of 25 charts. Now I'm just going to pick one here say revenue over time okay and we quick add that so you see there's been a lockdown period there you can change the periods so let's make it a bit more last month okay you can see a spike there let's see uh that's this quarter this quarter to date you see spikes there and that's loads of little graphs there so first thing you need to do is make sure you understand your own business. If you quick add, you can pick something then that means something, net profit. So we add one there, here's net profit over time and you see it rising. Now let's say we want to go in and advise the clients. Now this is a huge thing we have here. Now I'm an accountant to practice myself. I've a load of clients on this QuickBooks and you can give people a page or an email with numbers on it, but what really makes it work for them is is the picture scene so this coffee house is a demo program i've set up here but it's based on a real business that we deal with so it's real-time data and it's just going to open up now and i'm still dealing with the performance center here so i want to take a sneak peek of what it can do but every program is only as good as the information that goes into it so once people and quickbooks is fantastic at this are able to put in their sales and expenses and connect with the bank. The information is in there. It's just a matter of us programming it to make sure it's in the right place. And the training we'll show you later on will help you if you don't know how to do that straight away. But then again, let's go look at the overview. Let's look at, this is the coffee house. Okay, I'm just gonna go down to business performance, see it there. You'd almost wouldn't notice it, but it's a fantastic thing. Let's go there now. Let's have a look at what's happening here. So if you're talking with a client on Zoom or on GoToWebinar or anything like that, they'll understand more about these type of things. See here this year to date. We all remember what happened uh, so far in 2020. The Everything took off and then it died and then took off again. And people are like if businesses, if accounts don't look right, they generally aren't right. And that actually looks right in today's climate. So here you can see the sales taken off, you can see the sales taken off. So familiarize yourself with that. And there's loads of additional charts you can add in there to talk about. So recording these on a short YouTube video and emailing it to your client in 60 seconds, they'll get a picture of how their business is going. So that's the performance center. Okay. So check that one out. Okay. And now the next one we're going to move on to. Okay. Is just get this out of the way for myself. Okay, the sales center and invoice features. Yeah, huge tweaking there, but really user-friendly tweaking. Um, we'll take a sneak peek now of what they look at. And while we're at it, we'll have a look at the auto reminders, okay, and the latest invoice features. These are all happening right now. So I'll show you what the current position is and what's coming down the line. So if you're on QuickBooks at the moment, okay, um, what you're going to see in the sales center, I go here, all sales, you see a list of all sales going out the door and I'll just filter these. These are the overdue ones. So generally when you open it up, 
I went into sales, all sales, and it lists down, okay? And now these are, we'll pretend these are the clients list base. So everyone from Ireland will recognize this man, good old Leo, and Boris came over for a look. And you can see the sales going out, but a couple of them haven't paid their bill, all right? So let's have a look at Leo. He's a good, he's a good customer of this place. So we go over and say he's overdue. And we just want to have a look. Now this is the current position. And when you look at his bill, it says here, that's the bill, what did he buy? A load of coffee mugs. And we did up the bill here in QuickBooks. You could do it on the app as well. It's in there, we all know it's in there, but it's not paid. And it was sent to him on this date. It was resent to him, it was sent to him again. So we can see that it's sent, but I've got to click in and look down to find that. Okay, and if I want to resend it to him again, you can go down here to the bottom. That's the old way. The new way that's coming down the tracks is on these slides, all right? Okay, so here is you go into sales again and it lists down the customers. All right, so you see them all there, test center, the amount. Now it's in dollars because they developed this over the dollar region. And some of it is overdue, and some of it is due today. Okay, that's that. Now, and I move to the next slide. Let's see the next thing it'll do. When you go to the status area, it's, it's a much easier way to filter them between unpaid, overdue, paid, and that type of thing. These bars, they're not as cluttered as the previous bars. There was about five or six different colors in the last one. You may not recall that, but you'll be getting a recording of this video afterwards anyway, so that will come back to you. Okay. Um, but you certainly can search around much easier. You're also able to filter the columns. Now, this little cog on the right hand side, anyone who's on QuickBooks, if you click on the cog, there's always something semi programming it'll do for you. Same up here in the top right. I won't digress into that today. But uh, this one here, uh, you can filter. You don't want to see the balance, you just want to see the due date and the invoice number. That's how handy that one is. Okay, and then the next one. Okay, is on the invoice tracker. Now this is the super one. Did they look at the invoice you sent them or didn't they? So in this case, when you again, when you we filtered it that we wanted to look at all their status, we zoned in on the overdue. And I just if I just go back slightly, the key to looking at this, okay, is to click on that word overdue. Once you click on that, all this begins to open up. Okay. But as soon as you click on overdue, this will open up on the right hand side. And I was looking and I tried it out on the testing. So this guy opened it on the 6th of July. Okay, it was resent to him on the 13th. And behind that there, it shows that he read it. Okay. Um, sometimes there's an issue in QuickBooks where when it goes out on the email of QuickBooks, you can't see it on your normal office emails. Okay. Now they've brought in a new feature for that as well which uh, I'll come back to in a second. But if you have a Gmail account, you can actually choose to send it through your Gmail email address. And that way it's in with your Gmail emails, okay? So uh, that's a huge one. It just means you're not wondering, did the email go, did it not go, was it delivered, was it not delivered, all of this type of thing, all right? So, but um, here your clients can do this. And again, you can record it on a short video, send it to them or just show it to them in their office or, uh, share a screen, whether it's through Skype or Zoom or GoToWebinar. But if you show them this, they're able to chase up their money quicker. There's never a bigger headache. I think everyone agrees in chasing money. It's hard, number one, you've got to win the business. Number two, you've got to do the job and then try and get paid for it as a killer. So anything that makes it more efficient and you know, can, you can land your reminder with people, you know, not too far after it was due, it'll be a lot better. And the, the real handy one then is on the left-hand side, the batch actions, okay, is that you can tick them all down and send them all a reminder simultaneously, okay? And it even handle multi-currency if someone's dealing in multi-currency. So when I come back here now to our own QuickBooks, I show you that. So you see the batch actions there. At the moment, it's just not as handy to do that. You've got to do, do them one by one. Okay, but the new way will be, say you want to send two of these a reminder. Okay, this is the old way and it's just a little bit 
clunkyish and it goes and off that's gone to them and uh, the new way just shows if they got it or didn't they but certainly when it comes to the invoice let's go back to our friend leo we all like leo um if i go to the top here see the email you can actually add a gmail account and chase it up through gmail so that's how that goes okay so that's a, a huge one but certainly if you can help your clients in chasing money getting paid making profits they're not going to leave yet they're going to have no problem paying yet and they're going to recommend you to their friends all right so bear that in mind one to end review all right i'm going to come back now to the top of the pile here right so you're back as accountants and bookkeepers at the top and this is a huge opportunity uh, for everyone on this webinar to use this program to be able to do more for your clients and do and, ha and handle more clients because there's so many tools within it that remind you what needs to be done. All right. Uh, price properly. Make sure you're not doing work or for free. But certainly, uh, it's very easy to outline to a client what you do for them on this. So this new feature is the month end feature. Okay. So I've just clicked clients here on the left. Now, I always tell people on our training, if you get lost, and you might be lost, go to the dashboard. So if any of you are on QuickBooks right now, go to the dashboard, get a look around, what's happening, where am I? And above here, it relates to you, okay, your practice. And below here, relates to your books. And when you're getting into the clients, you, you click on clients here or up here, okay, where they list down. We're going in this area now. And the reason we're going in there um, is because I want to show you about the month-end review. So I'm going to click on bookkeeping. Okay, and see this word here, month end review. That wasn't there uh, four or five weeks ago. All right, they brought this out in Ireland. So I'm going to go down. So you see here, start September review. So these ones aren't started. Okay, but the ones with clocks are. Now, what else is happening here on the screen? The lead here has got to do with it being connected to our, our my QuickBooks, in other words. Okay, so I'm going to click on this part really cool that comes out isn't it and it kind of says what what we need to be thinking about with the month end review for that client all right if i went down to the next client so that's for the coffee house if i went down to the next client it'll bring it out for that client all right okay if i went up to this one bring it out for that client so they're all there and if you're allocating work for yourself or for your team members this is where you start okay so i'll just click on the second one it comes out again just so you know what does what here and the third one comes out again, all right? So, but it's triple reminder. So I'm up here now, we're in the coffee house again. And this will mean uh, a lot to you guys. It's, it's the famous checklist. So is there uncategorized transactions? That's items that have gone into the accounts, but we don't know what they're for. It's money that came in, we don't know where it came from. It's bills that come in, we don't know what they relate to. Is it telephone, is it stock? Is it rent, what is it? um is there any personal expenditure in the accounts you want to review loan payments is there interest that's been charged during the period we're just dealing with september here in this example and obviously cash transactions is there a receipt for them what are they about then your bank reconciliations your loan reconciliations this is what you do every month okay but as we click through them let's have a look at uh uncategorized i'm going to view the details here okay and lo and behold Knock your socks off. We land straight into the coffee house. Okay. There's the word month end review. All right. It's gone exactly zoomed right in. And of course, if you're the head, the big cheese in your organization and your team members, you can, you know, give access, not give access to different team members for different clients. You know, that's something you, you'll be managing anyway. But anyway, here's the month end review and there's uncategorized transactions. So the, here's items of Volvo. Some kitchen bought from Germany and something from Mary Jo that has been bought. And they've been entered in QuickBooks, but whoever entered them in, be it the client or one of our own people, or did it come in from an app, um, it doesn't know what it is. So let's look in. So that Volvo could be a car or a tractor. There's even a note there. So it's obviously some type of motor vehicle, and you just reclassify it. Okay. And um, where are we here? I find that. Does the account need to be set up even for it? You see, non-fixed assets actually. 
Yeah, there's a barista machine that's been bought, but it hasn't been quite, um, yeah, there hasn't been a tractor yet. So we'll just get that out of the way. Okay. German kitchen is going to be obviously going into the kitchen area. What it, this needs in this particular example, okay, the German kitchen was the barista machine, just not in the right category. So we'll type that one there, and demonstrate. And lo and behold, it's properly classified. So let's save that one. Something's not quite right. Something doesn't have a tax rate yet. And in that case, I'll be coming to the VAT now at the moment. And he's a sign tax code. We'll just get into it. Okay, I don't know why that's not coming up there for that second. I'll just come out and re-put it in. Okay, just click that one. Let's see now. Yeah. I don't actually know why the VAT's not opening up on that one. That uh, would happen on the webinar, but generally the VAT would just jump up there. But let's just do the Volvo. Okay, and we'll just set up Volvo vehicle. Okay. But the thing is, this month-end review has brought you exactly to what is an accounting problem. You've zoned right in unless you're not having to um, cast your eyes over it or anything like that. It's actually jumped right up at you. Okay. Save that in there. Okay. And we'll save that out of the way. But the month-end review... we'll put all those things into the right place, okay? And same thing further down, where it's, it's just like a checklist, check for personal transactions, and okay, you go off, you go into your reports, you go down to profit and loss, and all of that, and you'll tick them off and it's done, okay? Review the loan payments. Has the loan payments gone through for this month? Is everything done? Yeah, and you tick them off. At least when you come back to the month end review, there's items ticked off and done. Uh, record tra cash transactions. That's a question you'd ask, you know, if there's meant to be money that's not lodged, where is it? If it's in the safe, that's fine. But if it's been used to buy the newspapers every day, you'd want to know about that. And then you record them and they're done and so on. So this month in review, um, when I go back up to the practice and you're getting through it, it's giving you an automatic checklist. You're not having to say to people, check this, check that. It's already there. It's waiting for you. It's a massive uh, saver. And there's the coffee house again. Let me click in here and we can see some of the stuff is done. I mean, it's a cracker. Super. So at least you don't have to be thinking, what is Mary or Bill or do I have to do today? All right. So that's, that's how that works. And um, yeah. I don't know what more I can say about that. You know, that's, we all have to do the month end review. If it's done every month, the year end review is a double. We all know what year ends are like. Um, it's one landing, isn't there? Oh my God. All right. Okay. Doing fine for time. Um, okay. The Irish fat rates. Yeah. Now this was a heartache. The Irish fat rates. Um, the thing the old way was we had the UK QuickBooks. We used to put in the Irish VAT rates and work with that. And that was fine. But you know what? It wouldn't lead through to the return of trading details. And sometimes not properly through to the VAT 3 because there were just it was too big a change. So it was okay. You could mind it and get there. You use a different report and you got there. But now we've got the QuickBooks Ireland edition, right? And so when I show you the VAT rates that they have, there's more VAT rates than I realized existed. Um, so we're back up here again, and that's just, okay, I'll just go into our own VAT rates, I suppose. Might be the simplest for the moment, and you can do the same thing with clients. You go down, go down here to taxes, all right, okay, nothing, nothing looks too untold. And wow, we've all these VAT rates. Did you ever think there were so many, you know? But there is that many. And I mean, if I look at them for the start, the return of trading details I find, um, 
can be the one thing that will bring the tax people either driving out to you and say, where did you get these figures from? Or they're going to write you and say the same thing and give you a time limit to come back to them and all of this. So it's an awkward form. And most people who fill it out don't understand it. I've submitted it incorrect myself uh, quite recently. So the thing is, what rates do we use? And you can read down through these and it explains it. Now, the most common are standard, right? Um, so the standard rate at the moment is 21%. It was 23%. And then you'll see further down standard R, which means you're buying stuff in at the standard rate for resale. Okay, so in the coffee house's case, they might be buying the cups in, but they're going to sell them out. You know, these are the gourmet mugs. Um, whereas stuff you buy that's not for resale, it could be telephone costs, internet costs. You know, you're not selling that on, it's just part of the experience that is within here. Reduced rate would be electricity. Okay, there's actually um, for the hospitality rate. From the 1st of November, it's dropping for 13.5 to 9%. Now, I've spoken to developers of Intuit, and they're adding that VAT rate of 9%, and it's known as the second reduced rate. So you've got the standard rate, which is currently 21. It was 23. You've got the reduced rate, which is currently 13.5. Uh, that's staying there, by the way, and there's a second reduced rate coming in of 9%. Now, all that is fine. But if you sell or buy... To, or you export to the US, it's out of scope, right? There's one, because it's not within the EU. But if you sell within the EU, and these are all return of trade details items, and everyone here as a bookkeeper or accountant who has to deal with that, you can charge for filling out that form. And it's a lot of work if you have to go and, you know, delve in there and find out what's going on. But the um, this program will do it for you. So you can still charge the same, but the program has it done. You just need to be attentive. To, to your client and the program all the way along and they love you for it okay the great the, the other big selling point we find with quickbooks is that although it's great for accountants it's much it's greater for the client because they understand it they understand the pictures the graphs um the terms you know a supplier could be kevin barry or a customer could be mikey joe Mannion. uh it's not customer 44 or supplier abc or anything like that there's no jargon you can change the terms in the balance sheet and profit and loss to what makes sense. So with us, we have the balance sheet. I'm not going off grid here. The balance sheet is like a photograph of what you own and owe. And just call it that. Or well, the profit and loss is like the ocean tide coming in and out, but it's over time, you know? Money comes in, and then more money has to go out again in order to help money come in again. You get the idea. So with the VAT, um, you see these different VAT rates for goods bought from suppliers in the EU where a reverse charge applies at the standard rate. Reverse charge, if you have a VAT registered business, they buy something in from Germany or at the moment Britain or France or anywhere within the EU, they give their VAT number. The people over there do not charge VAT to us. That sounds great. But if they did charge VAT to us, what would it be? If it was the standard rate, we're meant to add 23% to the T2 box, 23% to the 21 box, they cancel out each other and it goes on the return and trade in details. If you don't do that and you don't mention it on this return and trade in details form, someone's going to ring you up or call out to you and say, you imported stuff from abroad, you didn't report it, why didn't you? And there's, there, there's fines there somewhere, okay? So pick the VAT rates that apply to your client here. You can knock off the ones that don't apply, okay? So the only ones that will come up within your client, I'll jump down to the coffee house, are the ones that do apply. Okay. So it's not a case that you'd be smothered with that list every time, but read it, pick the ones that are appropriate. If you don't know, ask, if, you, if you're going to ask someone, you know, uh, ask someone in Ireland, what's the VAT rate I should be using for this business? And um, if a rate needs to be reactivated, QuickBooks will say, it's not active, will I make it active? It'll say that to you. So here's the coffee house one. And I go up here to edit that, edit rates again. And they're all there again. And I'll just pick the standard one here. You can see there, that's 21%. 21%. If I enter a bill before the 1st of, um, when did it change? October or September? I can't recall the top of my head. Uh, it will change that automatically to 23%. Would you believe that in that? Isn't that marvelous? So. So you don't have to worry about what's the VAT rate, it'll, it'll do it for you.
So I'll pick a, a demi one here. Let's say we bought, um, let's see, something of Mary Jo maybe. Okay, she's down as uncategorized. So we'll find something for her now in a second. And uh, let me just find a expense area here. So, oh yeah, we bought a tool offer. Okay, some tools. Okay, and let's say it was 500. Now you see this is date is 21 October. I'm going to pick the standard rate here. Okay, it's 21%. That's fine. You see there, 21%. Um, now let's let's bring that date back a bit. Okay, we go back to the first September. Okay, I might have to come out and go back in. And we'll actually I'll come out and go back in just to illustrate the point of the security that the, the VAT on this gives you right now. So I'll go back to Mary Jo again. We'll go into repairs again. Bring the state back. Better work now that we're online. <laughs> and um, I well, actually didn't did it there. I'm using it in the right month for a start. Yeah, the sales rate for is different from what was selected. Make sure you update it before you use. Yeah, so we see there actually it was before the first of September the change was. There's the VAT of twenty three. Imagine that. So you will make the mistake or be accused of making the mistake. It'll fix it for you. So it does that. And the same with the reverse charge. I'll just do the show that reverse charge here. That import thing. Uh, reverse charge goods resale okay that's at the reduced rate 13.5 it adds it on and takes it off it does the whole that situation for you uh, and if it was a service 23 percent. so if you employed in a uk architect or a french engineer it'll work out that so that that thing is enormous i'm just keeping an eye on the time here um to make sure i don't so i can't overemphasize the better night's sleep you'll get with that. All right. So that's a new feature. And they're updating all the time. They're on top of it. Um, there's tweaking. And the main reason there's tweaking is because Ireland at the moment, between the last budget and the previous couple of stimuli to do with the uh, situation the whole world is in at the moment, they're bringing in little tweaks, changes, and all that. So these programs, you know, have to play a small bit of catch up, but they're right on it. Okay. So that's that one. Okay, what's our next port of call? Don't think I missed anything on that anyway. Um, so take a look at those and try not get into, by the way, last thing of adding VAT rates because they may not feed through to where we need them to go. Oh, yeah, not a new feature. Yeah, I was on a Facebook chat room recently. Just keep an eye on what people are talking about. It wasn't specific to QuickBooks, but somebody asked a question what is the timesheet program people use? a uh, splatter of programs I've never heard of were mentioned and uh, I'd never heard of them. So I just put on QuickBooks timesheets. There was a bit of, where's that? Do I have it? I have QuickBooks, never saw it. Anyway, I didn't re-comment or anything like that. But just to show people here, I mentioned to um, the people who are minding me here, doing a great job. Um, about this. So I said, I wouldn't mind throwing it on. But we use it all the time in our business. All the employees can put it there, what they're working on and how long they spent on it into this. So if you're a one man band or one woman band, okay, this is like, there's no icon around there, but where it is, is you press this plus new. Okay, so when you get lost, hit dashboard, there's nice little pictures of how the business is doing, how much money of it came in, how the sales are doing. Okay, it doesn't throw itself at you. But it's there, weekly timesheet. Okay, so this is Paddy Hegarty's one. Okay, this is putting my own name there. And it lists down all the different clients to business. I'm in the coffee house here, by the way. Um, actually, I'll just come out and go into the practice one just to make it a bit more realistic. So this is for yourselves, but for any clients you have, I have a, a team of electricians and they're all over the Dublin city centre doing fixed and lights and CCTV and all this stuff. And the boss would know who's working for what. And you can automate the report to come into them on the timesheets 
Friday night, Monday night, whatever. Whatever makes sense for them, ask them that. But anyway, the weekly timesheet. Okay, I put in, I put in who the employee, I put in this demo one here, and it lists down all the different clients. So let's just say they were doing work on the coffee house. Okay, and it's billable. And which, what day is today? Wednesday. Say so they did three hours on that. And it was the uh, Intuit webinar. Okay. Okay, now you can have every employee, you can have yourself obviously, but every team member working for you can have a link to this. They don't need to have a link to other aspects of QuickBooks, but they can have a link to this. Same goes for your customers. If they want to know what people are doing, they can use this feature. And another thing is it's great for rostering because all of their team members can have a link, just the team sheet and say, you're working next week. And it's just a matter of working on you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If it's a nine to five business, they know they're working. If it's a, a place where it's seven days a week, they work different days, you can facilitate it there. It's fierce handy, you know? And um, I'll just come back to where the reports show through. I didn't consummate that one. But on the reports then, in the report center, when you go down, okay, time activities by employee detail. That'll give you what they're up to. And you can break it down job by job or employee by employee. All right. So there's a good one. Um, but don't forget about that one. No need to buy another program. No need to integrate. No need to do it up on a piece of paper or on Excel and export and someone has to put it all together and what we charge that guy. And especially if somebody is, is querying a bill, what did you do? All those time features can feed through to the sales invoice, you know? So there there that's that's that one so uh, again when you get lost on these things just click that dashboard on the left okay and it brings you back it's like walking out into the foyer of a hotel it brings you back to where you can look around oh yeah i know where i am now and you go in looking okay um so i want to mention a couple of other cracking items now and um this is what they are so just for yourselves, um, so if you're expanding your QuickBooks base and you're expanding your clients and um, you want to do it in an affordable way and, and do something for the clients, like call that number 1-800 there, someone from QuickBooks will be on to you and they'll call you back. And any deal that's going, they'll, they'll certainly offer it to you. You don't need to ask, is there a deal? There's loads of deals and they're great, okay? First one that really, Push though. You see this training and certification page? Kind of write that down there now. And uh, I'll show you where it leads at the moment. But effectively, there's a self paced training, it's CPD approved, and it leads to a certificate. There's an exam at the end. It's not dead easy. You need to do the training to pass that exam, but you'll give, it, give you a certificate. Now I have that. And um, Google runs the world. I know we think different things run it, but Google runs the world. And when people are searching for QuickBooks accountants, they'll pick up on Intuit certified advisors. So everybody on this webinar, if you're not certified yet, get certified, all right? It's not going to stop you going for other deals here. It won't stop you going for this 5 for 35, which QuickBooks have in Ireland at the moment for all advisors. Uh, I've availed of it myself. You can pass on, basically what it means is for seven euros a month, um, you know, your clients can pay you more than that if you want, um, but you're getting the QuickBooks for them for seven euros a month. You can pass it on and charge in other ways. You can, if they go uh, to log on to QuickBooks themselves and, you know, they might get six months free or they might get a month free, but they won't get it as good as you can give it to them. So you can incorporate your services with a reduced level of QuickBooks. As long as you join, though, the QuickBooks Online Accountant, that's free, that's the umbrella, that's the God, the bird's eye view, and you're looking... Like you can look down, like I showed you there on those month end reviews. Okay. Uh, I'll just show you what that training is as well, because these things sometimes you can say them and people say, God, I, I'm on QuickBooks online and I don't see any of that. Okay. So there's Barry Accountants there. Um, and there's training. See here. There's a lot here in this few, few tabs, you know. Okay. And then learn something new and it's going to bring you into the training. So you go getting started, tells you how long, half an hour, 
it's their people, they know what they're at. Uh, navigating your clients, sales, expenses, fixed assets, bank, reconcil bank reconciliations, or bank matching as I prefer to call it. But it'll bring you to the online certification. Self-paced, you can go away from it, come back to it, but do get it done, it'll stand to you. And you can down, it'll actually give you a certificate. You put it into your CPD, and when the authorities come looking to make sure you're up to date, it's a great one to have. Now, that's what that is. I'll just show you where it ends up, though. See here, team, and the word certifications, and that's another new feature. That's why it's on here. See there, certifications. I should have been using the Zoom a bit earlier, shouldn't I? That's great. But uh, there's one of the, uh, these are our people. They won't mind me showing it. Um, but we've got three of them through at the moment, and these other three have only just joined us. They'll be through soon. But if someone is looking for a QuickBooks accountant, it doesn't bother. The more people that are on QuickBooks, it's better for all of us. Okay, it's a fantastic program for the client, fantastic for the business person. And if you're specializing in a program and you're specializing in this one, the clients will love you. It's just easy. If it's good for them, it's good for you. You know, that's, that's it. So that's the, the training. And that deal, if you phone that 1 800 number, uh, they'll come back to you on that. Okay. So I'm moving nicely on my time schedule here. Hopefully, I haven't lost anyone. Any questions, put them into the chat box. They'll be asking me about them in a moment. Um, and, uh, but that's us. Also, the other thing is, if you uh, have any questions that we don't get to today, feel free to email me. We will come back to you normally within 24 hours. But um, that's, that's that now. So thanks very much. And we'll move to questions and answers now. Thank you for that, Kevin. Um, yeah, so we do have a few questions here for you. Um, the first question that we have is, where is the find tool similar to what we have on desktop quickbooks um desktop has simple and advanced do you know where they can find this tool find okay um i think this, well the one we normally use is, is the top right you just have a look here to make sure i'm thinking so it's that search element there so if you were looking for a particular check number now i've none in my head i see a bill down there three six five 182, put that in. Okay, it brings it up there, something we put in and delete it. So when I click on that, and it'll bring up what was deleted, yeah. So it's the search, it's not so much the find. Now, I find the search button is, is automatically advanced. If you give it a, a sniff of what you're searching for, it'll go, it'll go back as far as there's information in there. Hope that helps. Perfect. I think that answered it perfectly, Kevin. Um, okay, our question number two is, can my client using QBO UK version switch to the Irish version and upload the previous year's transactions? The last time I checked, QuickBooks said no, not possible. That's still the same answer. And I don't know, is your customer that registered? It's just too much of an entanglement. Okay, um, moving previous transactions, and we're talking like each in transaction here, uh, that can't be done, and it's just not possible. So the only way to do that is finish up on a certain date, just say the date was 31 October, reconcile your bank, uh, all those items, and move the balances over. So if there's 100,000 in the bank, 40,000 owing to suppliers, each supplier you enter how much is owing to those suppliers on there. Um, but get going from the 1st of November onwards, and if there's any changes on the pre-31 October dates, you just make the changes in the old version and update them in the new version. But it, it doesn't have to be a heartache, but you can't, you can't move the transaction straight over. But you know what? You're better off moving to QuickBooks Ireland for the VAT and the reporting and the uniqueness to this country. So don't put it off. Once, once you get that over with, you'll, you won't forget it independent answer there now. Perfect, thank you. That makes 100% sense. Um, okay, perfect. Our next question says, how easy is it to migrate from Sage to QuickBooks? Haven't a clue, I've never seen it happen. Um, it would really be the same as what I explained there with QuickBooks UK. You'd need to finish up with a trial balance at a certain date, move those opening balances over, 
and then you're into new transactions on QuickBooks. Um, and that's all you need to do. It's really the same in every case. You just get your trial balance to a certain point. Christmas is a great time for getting this done. I'm doing a load myself at Christmas um, because it's quieter around and you can just finish things up and get going. So just, just pick a date, do a trial balance. And while if there's any time delay, you, you and your client can still use QuickBooks and move on and fill in the opening position afterwards if need be. Perfect. Um, Kevin, and then the, those are all the questions that we have for today. Um, I have one question for you that we'll just take offline because it's quite a specific question. But other than that, we are all good to go. Thank you very much. Okay, that's super. Um, thanks very much for everyone attending. And um, I'm just wondering, do I, there is an upcoming conference coming. Do I mention that or? Perhaps not. No, I think that's it. Uh, anyway, what I would say to everyone is watch out for the upcoming conferences or training videos or any help tips you're getting from Intuit. They're coming down the tracks. They're not going to swamp you, but keep an eye on the ones relevant to you and do them. You, you know, they're focused on Ireland and uh, anything that helps Ireland and helps you, helps your clients and helps us all earn a living. That's what it's about. Thank you very much.